a viewer had recently asked about the risks in consanguineous marriage. Let us see about it in today's video. Hi friends, I am Dr. Karamat. This is Scientific Doctor channel. In this channel, your health related queries are answered via videos which are released every week. If you want to see such videos, subscribe to this channel. Also, if you have any such queries, kindly post it in the comment section. I will try to answer them in subsequent videos. Today's video is about consanguineous marriage and the risks associated with it. What is consanguineous marriage? That is marriage within genetic relations. That is consanguineous marriage. Why this is of concern? This is a form of inbreeding genetic disorders. Disorders which have a genetic predisposition will be manifested more in persons who have consanguineous marriage. So that's why they become important. So what are the risks associated with it? I'm not saying every consanguineous marriage will have these problems with it. But these problems are more prevalent in children born to consanguineous marriage than in those who are born to non-consanguineous parents. For example, birth defects. No? All birth defects are more prevalent in children born to consanguineous parentage. And genetic disorders, especially those disorders which are of recessive inheritance. Meaning, you need to have two copies of abnormal genes to manifest that disorder. That means, if you have the bad copy from the mother as well as from the father, if you have both defective copies of that gene, then you manifest the disorder. The chances of both these genes becoming effective is more in inbreeding or in consanguineous parentage. That's why these genetic disorders are more among children born to consanguineous parents. Also, some of the blood disorders, heart defects, hearing defects, visual defects, all of these are more in children born to consanguineous parents. What about multifactorial diseases like hypertension and diabetes? They also have a genetic component as an etiological factor, but because there are multiple factors involved, the exact, you know, the risks associated with consanguineous marriage is not known for multifactorial disorders. Okay. So where is the risk more? The more closer the relationship, higher the risk. So, for example, this consanguineous marriage is more prevalent in Asia, in Middle East, in Africa. So, in each community, no, this is not confined to a particular religion. It is prevalent in you no know, almost all religions. In each community, there is a type of you no know, consanguineous marriage which is allowed. So, depending upon the genetic proximity, Okay, depending upon the level of inbreeding, the risk is more. The most risk is associated with double first cousins, which I have now put it in the picture above. So double first cousins mean siblings, marry siblings and children born to them. If they marry among themselves, no, the risk is more because the level of inbreeding is more closer. The so-called father and mother, that is the persons who are getting married. Their grandparents, both sets are the same. This is called double first cousins. This custom is prevalent in the Arab world. So this is risky. Similar risk, almost the same risk is associated with the common prevalent practice in South India, which is an uncle niece union. So this again you now has the highest risk of inbreeding. The next risk will be followed by first cousins. First cousins once removed and second cousins and so on. Beyond second cousins, probably the you know, risk associated with consanguineous marriage is not that much. But anyway, if you marry within that community, the level of inbreeding, it might be slightly higher than the rest. So how to prevent this? Whenever there is a history, family history of a heritable metabolic or a genetic defect, we have to counsel before marriage regarding their genetic proximity and the probability of having these disorders. For some of the blood disorders, 
you have genetic screening tools available so you can check whether the individual is a carrier of that recessive gene and then you know, can suitably advise regarding the marriage. Essentially, if you can, you can avoid consanguineous marriage to lower the risk of these defects and genetic abnormalities. Again, to reiterate, I am not saying that these are the only causes you can have de novo genetic defects, but compared to a general population, children born to consanguineous marriages are at higher risk of genetic defects, metabolic problems, birth defects and other di disorders. So, if possible, we can avoid this. Hopefully, this would have given a clear picture. If you like this video, share it among your friends and relatives. If you want to see such videos, subscribe to this channel. Till we meet again. Bye.